my holy shift UFO experience. Remove the panel bolts. They don't have to look like us humans, but I truly believe uh, that we're not alone over here. And thinking that, yeah, we are special. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another great episode. I say great, great episode because it's it's me doing the video. But anyway, it's I, th I promise you great two topics really great two topics the first one oh yeah before i even start you know people are asking me sandy why don't you put out some content about the gold wing well the gold wing right now is down because of a battery i'll tell you about it my one of my next videos i'm just waiting for a battery something something happened to it and the battery's on the way so soon 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 i'm gonna deal with the gold wing but uh you know what so as i have promised i have two interesting topics one is going to be installing you see this beautiful lowrider st the center console what are we going to call it uh a gas tank the gas tank uh console the gas tank uh thing I got from you know who my friends you know my friends already right these guys they actually it's one of the items I asked for them to send me let me show you let me give you give me a second there it is that's the box my friends out and by uh an Avan black sent me this and we're going to be installing this and this is color matched tank thing whatever that thing is called so we're going to be installing that in the second part before we get into the story this is the color matched fuel thing the first thing that i want to tell you about is as an airline pilot commercial airline pilot i want to tell you of my experience my encounter with a ufo my holy shifts UFO experience. So let me set the stage. It's 4.30 in the morning, 4.30 a.m. We're flying westbound, flying towards New York. We're coming over Boston and it's uh, around 35,000 feet. 4.30 in the morning, it's pitch, pitch black. It's dark, completely dark outside. Me and the uh, captain, you know, just, it's, it's, we're tired, but not tired, but we're, you know, it's, there's, there's very little traffic outside. We're in contact with the controller. And when you travel from one uh, point, one uh, entry point to the other, there's different uh, radar uh, coverages. So we're being switched from Moncton, which is uh, an area, an airspace area, and he switches us over to Boston. Uh, I think it was New York controlled. I don't remember exactly. And as we, you know, initially when you, you establish communication for the first time, so the controller says, so and so, flight 001, switch over to Boston. 124.65, and then you answer 124.65, you switch over your uh, radio communication, and first contact, you call the new for, uh, controller, and you, you establish your communication with him, and uh, we call him, and he said, Boston, I think actually it was New York, New York, hello, this is so-and-so, flight 001, 35,000 feet, good evening, and he answers back, and that's it. We keep our, uh, we're going, think about it, we're going westbound. On the right side, I can see Boston lights. You see the ground. And on the left side, you see a stretch of lights. And it's pretty much uh, Long Island. It's very long, a very long strip of lights. And at night, you can literally see, everything's dark, but you see the ground. If it's a nice, clear uh, day with no clouds beneath you, you can actually see the lights. 
on the ground. And we're just looking around. It's pretty quiet, it's 4.30 in the morning. Not a lot of traffic out there. But as we are, we're just sitting there and looking around, we hear, we're not really paying attention. It's, it's uh, as, as an aviator, you learn, you actually learn because there's, when there's a lot of traffic and a lot of radio communication around you, you learn to screen out information that doesn't pertain to you, that is not about you. So, and the minute they call your call sign, you immediately, you know they're talking to you. So at this stage, there are a few traffics out there, a few airplanes out there that are talking between the airplane and the gr uh, ground control. The ground control actually has a radar and the ground control can see all the airplanes around him, all the traffic around him. All of a sudden, we notice a strange communication pattern. And what I mean is we hear the controller, the AT, actually to talking to another airplane, and we hear a, a, some kind of conversation that we're both, we look at each other, and the conversation was about something like, Thanks to you guys, I'm getting a lot, a lot of comments. Thank you very much. But just know that because of so much work, comments, and a busy schedule, I can't go over all the comments. That's why I use this filter. I go to my comments, I tick off. If you're subscribed to me, if you're subscribed to me, I actually see your comments. Those are the people I reply to. Whoever is not subscribed, thank you for uh, commenting anyway, but I can't really get, I don't have time to see all your comments. So please subscribe to the channel. Help me grow. That's it. Let's go back to the, the controller. Actually, to talking to another airplane, and we hear a, a, some kind of conversation that we're both we look at each other, and the conversation was about something like, "Yeah, it was like this. It was like, yeah, we we've seen it, and it was going. Uh, it was a huge lit up triangle, and it shot up. Uh, I don't remember if it was exactly, but like shot up ten thousand feet above." and then move to the right and move to the left, then descended fast again. And, and we realize that they're talking about something that, that is not known to you know, us uh, as aviators. We, you don't get to see an airplane or, or some kind of airship that goes up and down so fast and is a triangle. So we realize, so we realize he's talking about something very different. So I immediately, I, I, I called uh, the controller, I said, this is uh, so-and-so 001. Am I hearing you right? Are you talking about an unident, are you talking about a UFO? And the controller says to us, yeah, you can't believe it. This is the controller saying to us, yeah. I've been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, communication from uh, airplanes around you talking about this UFO that they're seeing, describing a huge triangle, moving very lit, really uh, bright, moving up and down thousands of feet and moving around. And I'm not getting any, like the controller saying, and I'm not getting any, any readings of on my radar of it. So we're like, oh man, it's, it's, it's a, literally a UFO. So obviously immediately I take my, my camera out and get ready to shoot. And we ask him like, where, where exactly were you seeing him? Where, where's the, uh, the air, where are the airplanes uh, saying that they see him? And they, he said, they see him flying or moving around over Long Island and it's on our left side. So both of us for the whole, for the whole remainder of the 50 minutes of the flight till we landed back uh, in Newark, we were heading towards Newark. We were literally looking the whole time, waiting, waiting to see the UFO, but we never, we never got to see it. So my encounter with the UFO was like, I did not physically see that UFO, but I was in the air when there were other airplanes around me describing and talking about seeing an unidentified flying object, like an, a, a, some kind of craft that is flying beyond our physics that we know, that we recognize as aviators, you know, we know certain physics that we learned in school, how airplanes fly, lift, drag, all, you know, propulsion and stuff like that. And this, apparently this object was, was literally doing things that are 
not not something that we know as uh, as pilots as a aviators. Now to all of you, so that that is my encounter. That is my encounter. And by the way, that did not surprise me. Like personally, when people ask me if I believe in UFOs, well, yeah, I, I actually do believe in UFOs. I, I really do. Um, so people, uh, when they react to that, they're saying, well, then how, how, can, how can you explain that if there are UFOs? How come they never, how they, they never came to earth? How can we never seen them? And to that I say, uh, actually, I do believe they came to earth. And whoever makes the decisions or wants, the keep, wants to keep their presence from us is doing a good job of diverting the attention from, from the fact that they're actually here. They were here or they are here. And uh, it's not a conspiracy theory or anything, but I, I truly believe that. As a matter of fact, I truly believe that you, you have to be with you know the size of the universe, of the galaxies that we live in, and it's endless and endless and endless amount of stars and and uh, planets. And it's it's actually somewhat naive, you know, to think that we're special and we're the only beings around. I truly believe there are other beings, other uh, forms of life. Maybe they don't look like us, you know, like you, but they are. Uh, some kind of evolution. Maybe they're way ahead of us and they already know how to form themselves in a different I don't know. They, they don't have to be look. They don't have to look like us humans But I truly believe uh, that we're not alone over here and thinking that yeah, we are special and uh, We're the only ones in this huge huge galaxy and, and It's somewhat naive so yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. That that's that happened like two months ago, and I was waiting for a good opportunity to, you know, to talk about it. Uh, and now let's uh, go to that install. So unfortunately, weather, I just can't take the bike out. It is so cold out and windy like crazy. My microphone is gonna be all blurred up, so I'm not gonna do the job today. I'll probably do it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Hey, good morning. Tomorrow is now. It's now tomorrow. It's freezing out. I'm going to do this quick because uh, our first uh, episode about the UFO was a bit long. I'm going to take the bike out and switch out the fuel tank panel. Unlock your saddleman seat with the saddleman tool. Remove the seat. Remove the panel bolts. And this is the second one. Obviously a different size. Why should it be the same? And it just pops off. Let's prep the new one. This goes in the front right here. And this goes in the back. The, the one that's different goes on the top. And if it doesn't go in smooth, it, you need to drill it in. Not drill, but you need to force it in through the, the ABS plastic. And then it meets this part on the other side. You see how it's coming out from the other side right here. There you go. sure it's aligned and straight and then tighten it down orientation because it can be either this way or that way let me check the orientation I'll be right back okay this is the proper orientation flaring up they say do not use Loctite here Oh, this one is actually a Torx, a Torx screw. I used the Allen before, but it's actually a Torx head. You don't need to over tighten it.
yeah I'm gonna put the smaller side the smaller side out facing out it looks nicer I think you see that one side is longer than the other I imagine you can probably put both ways I'm putting the longer side in boom what a what a guess better start from the bottom this part is going to be covered by the seat start from the bottom run your way up this part is not really seen let me do the other side that's it got both sides on both both uh, rubber rubber whatever accents rubber moldings now let's install you need to calm down lip over the tank be careful not to scratch the tank while you're doing that there you go it's just latches on it's in there you go and it bottoms out oh nice now put the seat back on. Saddleman seat, I love it to step up. So comfortable and awesome looking. There you go. My anti-theft screw and my special tool for anti-thieves. <laughs> and there you have it. Let's see what it looks like. down by the description from Advan Black. I think it looks pretty cool. The color match is uh, spot on. Really nice. So what do you guys say? This one, the color matched, or the original? Let me know down by the comments. And uh, yeah, if you want a response, please be subscribed because I use a filter where I can only see subscribed uh, comments. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this whole segment, my UFO experience, this quick, color matched panel install very soon i've got a big big surprise it has to do with the new harley i'm getting stay tuned make sure to subscribe a new harley i'm sandy watching holy shift till the next video guys peace out